American woman who lived in Paris for six years exposed a very dark side to life in the city of light, revealing she's been robbed, assaulted at Le Vreux, and survived a kidnapping attempt, but she still says she's happier than she ever was in the US. It seems as if having bad experience sometimes makes you very happy and appreciative when you're still alive and going forward. So she made the TikTok and she got 1 million views and it's so freaking viral and I think it's a beautiful thing. Let me show you. Today is my six year anniversary of moving to Paris and I want to share some thoughts with you. Mm. There are four pregnant bellies that I never got to touch and seven newborns that I never got to hold. Four funerals I wasn't able to attend and dozens of birthday parties I couldn't be present at. Mm. I have famously had six cell phones pickpocketed. I had an Uber driver try to kidnap me. I was assaulted at the Louvre by like 14 guys. And Whoa. I had my drink drugged with something on the Seine. I've gone to the police station to fill out police reports five times and I visited the hospital five times. Mm. A French person has made me cry at least a hundred times. Okay. And I have been told c'est pas possible when it was possible at least 500 times. If you move abroad, you will miss everything at home. Mm -hmm. You will miss events, births, weddings, and funerals. You'll spend countless days feeling lost, mm -hmm. not knowing anything about life, feeling stupid. I've been there. <laughs> You'll be discriminated against simply for being an immigrant. And not me in Spain. Well, not at the level that people think I'm supposed to experience it though. Be treated like a second class citizen. You'll make new friends and then they'll move away. You won't be able to express yourself the way you want to, and you'll find yourself constantly thinking, I'm so much smarter in English. I'm so much funnier in English. They have no idea. True. You'll think you're fluent in the language and then find out that you're not. True. And then you'll think you're really, really fluent this time. But no, you're still not. <laughs> you'll have to I mean, French is kind of, it's French people. You, you're kind of special with the language. You have a little, you're a little more prideful. You clearly made it more difficult so you can separate who's the poor one, which one is the rich. It's like, excuse me, do you know I can get breakfast? Je ne comprends pas, monsieur. I mean, if you just try to speak Italian, most Italian would be very happy. <laughs> and he got a kick out of me saying, Sono a fumato. Hey, look at you, eh? Son of a bitch, sono a fumato. Giuseppe, come in here. Say it to Giuseppe. You have to relearn everything you know about how life works, and it's gonna suck. No. That is you because you come from USA and you have some of these weird way of human right thinking that you need to live in the perfect world and that's why when you experience something you get so much anxiety. You have to learn a lot. I didn't have to when I moved to Spain. <laughs> no, no, no. That's you. But do it anyways. Since True. moving to Paris I've had four visas and I've lived in three different apartments. I've acquired a new cat. <coughs> But I'm not going to say anything. I had the most intense relationship of my life and then the worst breakup of my life. I cheated on you in your dreams. With my sister. It's not my fault. Created an entire new sisterhood of women that are smart and caring and just incredible that I'm so lucky to surround myself by them. I would say I have a lot of families, people with kids that I hang around with. And we have a... I don't know. It's like we have a village in a city. But hey, I'm a Christian, so maybe for me it's just a lot easier than you. I've had four jobs and I've been fired from one of them, mm. which is really scary when you live abroad. Oh my God. Now I have three quarters of a million followers on TikTok. And yeah, that's a good career if you can do it right. I've helped millions of people with their trips to Paris and staying safe in Paris. True. Check the comments. They, she gave some good advice to help people. I've gone to at least 40 concerts, done a hundred picnics, eaten 500 baguettes and drank a million bottles of wine. You still look good though. I've traveled to 35 countries and I think, finally, understand French culture. <laughs> I've done things I said I would never do. Mm. I'll just shut up. <laughs> I'll just shut up. Changed my mind about subjects that I would have gone to war for in the past. Topics that I was so certain that I feel strongly to my core about this topic. I've changed mm -hmm. my mind. I think traveling does that to you because you start realizing that just because you think in a certain way, 
maybe, maybe, just a little maybe, you might be exaggerating something because you live in a bubble and once you experience other culture, you notice how you can change. I decided to go have dinner with anybody I'm supposed to hate and have a conversation. And even if we disagree, many times you realize, hey, we're kind of the same. We just look at it at a different way. And sometimes we can find an equal ground. And I've learned that your beliefs are not stagnant and inherent. They're just beliefs. Go tell that to that people. Yeah, you know which one I mean. You just go tell them. They would never change because there's always something in the past. They're, they're relative to your environment and they can change. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I can look myself in the mirror and say that I have done everything I've always wanted to do. There's no secret dream looming in the back of my mind that I'm saving for a later date. That doesn't exist because I've done all of them. And that feeling, the ability to look yourself in the mirror and say that you've done everything you've always wanted to do, that's what they write stories about. That's what movies are about. People wish that they could bottle that up and sell it. And I wish I could bottle it up and sell it for you. But I can't because the only way to have that feeling is to take the leap yourself. Mm -hmm. For me, Paris is the happiest place on earth. And it's where I belong. But maybe your place is somewhere else. I do think that's a little cringy. That you're celebrating that you're at a place. I'm happy that you can find peace. I think this peace is rather new to her. That she realized... It's not about how many people like me in real life or on Instagram. It's about finding something that I really enjoy doing and whoever gets along with it gets along. And the thing is that she has been experiencing a lot of bad stuff that a lot of people say it's you're not supposed to experience that. But just because you experience something bad, that doesn't mean you don't appreciate something better. A lot of people say sometimes to me, why does God let that happen? I'm like, why did you like the video of a father that's very strong on a Facebook because something bad happened? Because it motivates you in a different way. If everybody gets whatever they want, they become like complacent. They don't do anything. And then they start complaining that they still can't do anything. And I'm like, bruh, how can it be your human right that you eat too much, stay at home, and then, for example, taxpayers need to pay for you? It, it makes no sense. And some people say she might be coping because friends have a lot of immigration issues. Maybe. Not all the countries are perfect. And if you can be happy in an imperfect country, amen, you'll be way happier than a lot of people. I really hate to get all emo and like, you're spin not class instructory on you, but I feel like it is my duty and it would be a disservice to not have this talk with you. If there's something you want to do in life, just do it because if not, you will spend the rest of your life regretting it. And I promise you, the feeling of being able to look yourself in the mirror and say that you did it, it's, it's priceless. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Happy six years in Paris to me. If somebody is happy, experiencing bad stuff and she is still happier because she doesn't feel like she is in the box and she sees enemies everywhere and it's normal that bad things happen but there's a beautiful tomorrow you can't live a life boxing people you're a protective class you're an evil class this is the right way of thinking Nah, man you have to have a middle ground with your own freaking life if you can do that hey man life is douchey life is amazing but hey let me know what you think about this lady because hey i think we need a little more positive in this society because whew, all these maui things and the things that i keep seeing on the internet i'm praying every day more <laughs>